Hey, this is Captain Jim Hanley. I'm back down in Florida for my winter season. I'm ready to hit Marathon Florida pretty soon, but I stopped with to visit with my buddy Jeff Fink. Jeff is a fellow Lake Erie fisherman, but he's also a retired? Retired, Ray Marine rep, so, Lawrence rep, Shakespeare rep, <laughs> U.S. Coast Guard captain, etc. He knows it all. Hey, I thought I'd stop and we're going to go over some depth finder basics because nobody knows better than Jeff. He's been he's been grooming me for a long time. And I started out with flashers. So that was back in the early 80s. And now we're up to screens that, hey, man, they just take over the boat. It's unbelievable. So Jeff's going to show us a bunch of stuff. Watch this. Hey, if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And put some comments down on the bottom. I appreciate that too. Hey, this is uh, Jeff Fink here. Uh, we're now going to get a little bit more in-depth at customizing our multifunction display. And this is pretty much the same for most all of the new multifunctions that are out there in the market now, whether it be Raymarine or Lowrance, Hummingbird, Garmin, etc. You need to take a little bit of time when you get on your unit. And first thing is customize the home screen and all your functions the way you want them. Once you get them done, you get out in the boat, you decide to do something different for the day, or you're gonna target a different fish, or you may not fish at all, you're just gonna run around and enjoy the day. You wanna have a icon with the functions and the features that you want ready to go at a touch of a button, rather than having to spend a lot of time going into menus and trying to find where everything is. So this is a home screen that I happen to have set up now. And as you can see, there are eight different windows in here of which I built every one of these windows with the features that I wanted. And you can do the same. What you do on any of these particular home screens in most of the units, they'll have a customized key. On our particular units here at Ray Marine, you hold the screen in and a little window pops up and it says customize, delete, or you can rename it if you don't like the name that the machine gives you. You hit the customize button and it now puts me on that screen. This current screen is set up with a map on half of the screen and a fish finder on the other half of the screen, which is one of the most common particular uh, functions that I use when I'm running around, running offshore, looking at the map where I'm going, at the same time watching the bottom and trying to find the fish. Now, if you wanna customize and change anything on this particular screen when you're on here, you have a couple different options. You have your layout screen, which when you touch it, it says full screen, two apps, three apps. You can do four apps if the screen is large enough to accept it. You can do side by side. You can do top and bottom. You can do three-way splits. If you want three functions, two functions, one function, whatever. I have this in two apps right now. And now when I touch this, you'll see a little box highlighted around the page that you can either keep or you can change it to something else. For our intensive purposes here, I'm gonna change this one from the map to a radar. So I'm gonna to simply touch the radar icon and now you see this side switch to a radar. Now it jumps to the other side of the screen. When I touch this side of the screen, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna make this side a map. So now what you have is now I have a radar and a chart plotter and I've taken my fish finder away on this particular screen. When I'm done and I have it where I want it, I hit next and it now says up here, radar chart. If you like that name, you leave it alone. If you don't like it, you can touch the X, it'll erase that and using the keyboard, you can type in whatever you wanna name that page. And when you're done, you hit save. And now you can see that screen says radar chart. It's got the icons very easy to see what that page is gonna do when I touch it. And as you can see, all the other pages I have built on here, for example, I decide I get to where I'm going. I wanna look at a chirp fish finder and a down vision together. I touch that page and now it'll switch my machine into my chirp fish finder and my down vision on the other side of the screen at one touch of a button. Right now, I don't have to do anything 
everything will be done by the machine because of the way it is all set up. I get ready to go back and look at something different. I hit the home button again, and now I can go over and now I have my Sirius satellite weather for the area with the overlay of my map. And you can see here, I've got you know rain coming over here. This is all live down here in Florida. I've got little rain showers moving across the state. All these colors out here in the ocean and the bays is all the sea surface temperatures. It'll give me lightning strike indicators. However, I want to set this up, a great way for me to quickly look. What most people have an issue with is when do they adjust sensitivity? How much sensitivity do you need to use? It it's, can be tough a lot of times. Fortunately, all the machines nowadays allow you to pretty much play with the unit, try and get a good picture. If you mess it up, you can very easily go back to automatic mode and it'll reset just like you do with your phone. It messes up, you turn it off, turn it back on, it resets, it's back to the way it started. On these units here, when you go into the menu, on all the customers, different machines, whosoever it is, there's a adjust sensitivity key. When you adjust the sensitivity key, you're gonna get some different functions. Your, your gain, your auto, your surface filter. And as you saw down below there, you have all to auto. If you're in auto mode, okay, when it says reset sensitivity, it's gonna put everything back to automatic and you click yes, it's gonna make the machine go right back to the factory standards. So now there's been no customization done to this particular screen. Now I do wanna go back and customize it. Well, if the machine is in auto mode, the first thing you have to do is when you touch the sensitivity key, you'll now see it says auto and it's check marked in green at the bottom. When you touch that, it unchecks it and now auto mode is off, which means the sensitivity is now being able to be set by you scrolling your finger or if it's a unit, you can turn the dial to make that sensitivity adjuster move up and down depending upon your unit that you're using. This one happens to be a, a touchscreen and a button hybrid. If it's just touchscreen, you use your finger. If it's a button only mode, you just use the button. Or as it says with a hybrid, you can use either one. Now for sensitivity wise, again, the key to sensitivity is maximizing the amount of return signals that you're seeing. That's what sensitivity is. Sensitivity is not the power of the unit sending the signal into the water. It's adjusting the receiver of the transducer to receive those signals back. So the more sensitivity you use, the more signals you're going to see. So it's very important in a lot of conditions that you can do a better job than the machine will do. And you can see more fish targets, better bottom structure, thermoclines, different functionalities when you can play with your sensitivity versus just a standard auto setting. Standard auto settings do a good job for the most part. For somebody who does not want to mess around with the machine, may not fish all that often. If you're a little bit of a serious fisherman, learn to play with your sensitivity. And remember, as we showed before, when you're in that sensitivity key, if you get all messed up, simply go down to the bottom and turn it back into auto and it will now reset it back and let the machine do it for you. Now here on this machine, we have a dual card slot with the upper slot being number one and the bottom slot being number two. And on this particular unit in the back, I have an external card reader, which is, which is called the external slot. Now on the slots, you have to make sure that you do not save your waypoints to the card with your maps. Biggie, Biggie. Biggie, Biggie <laughs> is right. Because um, what will happen is if your map card happens to be full or close to full with a lot of the map data and you start piling on external data, waypoints or different things on that card, it'll start erasing your maps and you don't want that to happen. So you take that blank card, you put it in the extra slot. And once it's inserted in the extra slot, you go into your menu screen or your home screen and there's a tab on the bottom that says my data. When you hit the data screen, you'll see a 
you'll see a key at the bottom and almost all the machines are the same where it says import export some may say save waypoints whatever the terminology is you touch that and you now going to get an import export screen and you will see on here a key that says save my data so i'm going to touch that key and it's going to ask me do i want to save all the data and the data meaning all my waypoints all my routes and all my tracks so if I want to save all of those, I touch the save all data key and it will save all of that data onto the card. If I only want to save waypoints and I have no tracks or routes I even want to worry about, you just touch the save waypoints key and it will only save your waypoints. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to save my data and we're going to choose all data, save all data. It's now going to ask me where to save it. Slot one, nope, that's my Navionics card. Slot two, nope, that's my Ray Marine map. External one is my extra. So I'm gonna to touch external one. It's gonna tell me today's date. It's gonna say archive 1-19-24. I'm gonna hit save. It's now saving the data down below. Now it's done. It said saving is complete. Do I want to eject my card? No, I have an external reader. I leave it in because I save my waypoints and my data all the time. So I hit OK. And now I'm back out. I hit the X and close. And I'm back to my home screen. Now what you can do is you can take that card out of that card file. And you can take it and put it into another unit of somebody else's as long as they accept the GPX format. That is the format for waypoints and data to be saved in these new machines. And most of the companies accept GPS, GPX, excuse me, data. And it's nice because I can take my chip and take it to Jim's unit and put my waypoints onto his unit. Or I can take it home with a program and I can edit it at home. I can do all kinds of things with it now that I have it on the card. But the biggest deal is you've got a backup. If you have to do some software updates or you have to do anything and that unit has to get reset where it's going to wipe the data from the screen, you have it all backed up on that micro SD card or that SD card, which you can then put it back into the machine and then put all your data back, which was how, what we're going to show you how to do next. Okay, now we're back. Uh, we've saved our waypoints and put them onto our uh, SD or micro SD card. And now what we want to do is we're going to put them back into the machine and reload them. Either you got a new machine or you had to do some software updates and you had to erase your data, but you want to put those waypoints or the waypoints, routes and tracks back in. So now what we do again is we go down to my data and when you go down to the import export key again, now instead of saving data, you're gonna import the data into the unit from the card that you have put back into your machine in the appropriate slot where you saved it before. You're gonna put input from card. As you can see, there's three different slots in my machine, but mine are on the external SD card that I have under the dash. So when I touch that, it says external SD card, Ray Marine, my data. Now there's all the data that I have saved onto that card. And there's a lot because I save a lot of uh, data to my cards. So we're gonna go down, down here and we are gonna find the one that is from 2024, which is right here, 11924. And when I touch that, it's gonna say importing in progress. It's gonna import all the data and it now says there's already a track with the same name on the machine. So we're going to keep both items. And we're going to click this and do this for all of them. And now it says import complete. I've reached my limit of because I've doubled it on my machine. I never erased anything. So <laughs> anyhow, now we have everything imported back into the machine. And now you can start using that machine just as if you've had it from before. Hey, Jeff, that was some good stuff, man. People are going to learn a lot. You know, it's just those simple things that really make using your depth finder a lot easier.
Ab absolutely. And if you just take a little bit of time and learn your machines, and it'll just make your life a lot easier not having to continuously go back and forth in the menus all the time, especially when you're on the water yep. in the middle of catching fish That's right. or whatever. Yep, <laughs> good stuff. Hey, folks, enjoy all this beautiful creation while you're out here. Take a moment to look up and give thanks. I am Captain Jim. We'll see you in the next video.